Um, I am giving a talk at the APS meeting. The title is Can the public trust in science and scientists be restored? The title of my talk I actually stole from a website at the University of Rochester where they had an interview on the question whether the public trust in science and scientists can be restored, and in particular they referred to a survey that was uh, done in 2022 that said that the American public trust in scientists had dropped significantly recently. And I thought that might be related to something that also happened at the University of Rochester two years earlier, which is the announcement that they had discovered the world's first superconductor at room temperature. That um, you may remember, the news media was full of uh, praise for this discovery in October 2020. Um, and uh, so it was a very exciting announcement. However, this is a paper in Nature. Um, and uh, the paper says that uh, the data of the paper were available um, from the corresponding author upon reasonable request. So as some of you may know, I was interested in this. So I requested from the authors and the editor of the Nature paper that they share the data. Uh, and this was in November 15, 2020. And uh, immediately the author replied that unfortunately he couldn't share the data for a number of reasons. And I kept asking, I was really interested in those data. So I had a lot of emails with the editor in Nature asking them to please ask the authors to share the data and the editor telling me the authors are not willing to do it, but the editor told me they would insist and they kept insisting and insisting and nothing happened until November 2021. Meanwhile, I also uh, checked with NSF that I saw they also require authors uh, to share the data. So I contacted NSF, that was in May of 2021 and asked them if they could please ask the authors of the paper to share the data with me. And I had a lot of emails with NSF, they were very slow to respond and uh, they had various points to make. So it went on and on and on. And in particular, one of the responses all the way to November, one of the responses was this one, that according to the NSF regulations, they allow exceptions to accommodate legitimate interests of investigators and that the PI will share the data someday. I told them there were no legitimate interests, but that didn't help. So I contacted the office of Inspector General at NSF that is supposed to help in these situations on July 26, 2021. And indeed they were very responsive. Just one day later, they told me that after careful considerations, they had determined that they would not do anything. So I was very frustrated and published this paper in September, 2021, where I said that the data availability statement is not being uh, respected and that is a problem and suggests probable scientific fraud. And the news uh, media picked that up, in particular Science as the News article where they said, and they mentioned that I had uh, made this request and for nearly a year the authors refused to provide them. But because of that publicity perhaps, the authors finally did provide the raw data in December 2021, as it says, uh, because of uh, this recent publication. So the data were provided. Meanwhile, I was also con contacting the University of Rochester uh, starting in August 17, uh, they have an integrity hotline, but it's not so hot because it took three months to get back to me for the first time. And I finally got to talk to the vice president of research and he said that uh, they are launching an inquiry first and then a second inquiry. And then um, finally in May, they responded to me and Dirk van der Marl that uh, with whom I was collaborating on this, that they had done this inquiry and concluded there is no misconduct or fraud on the part of Rangadias. 
and that uh, the university will not investigate the matter further. Uh, I also contacted the University of um, Nevada, Las Vegas, because one of the main authors, Ashkan Salamat, is a professor there. That was in November 2021, before the data were released, asking them about the data and then questioning the data in August 2022. They told me they had closed the matter, but of course it's confidential, so they didn't tell me anything more. The paper was retracted by Nature in September 2022 um, because of an investigation that Nature did after we, Dirk and Werner Mar and I, detected serious uh, anomalies in the raw data that they finally had released. But then in March 2023, Nature published another paper on uh, hydrides by the same group saying that it's also, again, a room temperature superconductor now at ambient pressure. And again, the media were um, celebrating and uh, the public was learning that again, we physicists that created room temperature superconductivity. But then a few months later, that paper was also retracted in November 2023. And here's another retracted paper uh, on the same topic in January 2024. Now let's come to what's happening now, because there is this other paper that I have been trying to understand for quite a while, published in June 2022 on, again, hydride superconductors magnetic field screening. And again, it has a statement of data availability that the data are available from the corresponding authors upon reasonable request. And again, I'm interested in understanding this paper. So I requested from the corresponding authors in January of last year, if they could send me the underlying data. I will talk in detail about the physics of this tomorrow at uh, this talk. And I hope you will, you will come and, uh, and uh, ask me questions about it. So, to make a long story short, I didn't get the data and I got a notification from the Springer uh, Nature Research Integrity Direction, a Director in September 2023, informing me that the authors had said they don't want to share the data and that they have sufficiently explained why they haven't shared the data and that Springer Nature cannot share so they cannot tell me why the data are not being shared, but uh, they recognize the right of the authors to not share the data. So then I contacted the institution where the research was done, the Max Planck Institute for Chemistry in Germany, hoping they would help me get those data. Uh, in particular, Joss Levybill, the managing director, I wrote to him saying that, um, that I understand that uh, Max Planck Society encourages scientists to make research data publicly available and uh, that if uh, I would appreciate if you would help me get the data. That didn't get very far. Uh, basically, uh, the director couldn't help. So I contacted further the Max Planck Society. Finally, I got an email from the vice president of Max Planck Society, Professor Claudia Felser informing me that um, that Mr. Ermetz had expressed concerns about making his research data available. And so they believe that he has justified these concerns, although I was never told what those concerns were. And so the case is closed for the Max Planck Institute and they are not uh, going to ask Ermetz to supply the data either. So where are we today compared to three years ago? Are journals enforcing data availability statements more? No, they are enforcing them less. Uh, from what we can see, uh, what the director of Springer Integrity told me, uh, Springer Nature. Are institutions following up on concerns about data availability more than before? No, Rochester took a long time, but they did an inquiry. Uh, Max Planck uh, hasn't done anything. Do journals, does archive, and do news media bring more attention to data non-availability and possible fraud? No, a lot less. I mean, three years ago, I was able to publish this paper on probable fraud that 
uh, that ultimately led to the release of the raw data. Now, no journal will publish such a paper, and the uh, archive doesn't allow me to post anything on this. And so it's not happening. So can the public trust in science be restored or helped by this attitude? I think um, the answer is obviously not. All this undermines the public's trust in science and in scientists. So to summarize, when we compare what happened three years ago and what's happening now with a very similar situation, data that are not being released, that are key to understand whether materials are superconductors or not, Ranga Diaz from day one said there was a background subtraction in the paper, and the paper of RMS didn't disclose that there had been background subtraction until 18 months later in an author correction. The Ranga Diaz responded to my email asking the data, saying he wouldn't supply them, but at least he responded. RMS didn't even respond. Ranga Diaz gave reasons for not releasing the data. Um, RMS hides the reasons. The journal Nature insisted that the data should be released. The journal Nature Communications says that RMS has a right not to share the data. The data have not been released and so on and so forth. I'm running out of time, so let me speed up and just say that um, fraud was established because the raw data were released in the CSH case here, the manipulated data, we don't know if they are fraudulent or not, remain in the literature and nobody's doing anything about it. So in the in the journal webpage, I put a comment saying I would like to encourage other readers interested in this topic to make reasonable requests for data that support the findings of this study. And again, I hope you will come to my talk tomorrow where I talk more about this. Thank you for your attention.